Hey guys, Jeff here with Thrive Vans, and today I'm coming at you from the van cave to talk about our electrical systems. Um, I get a lot of questions about um, how do we do our electric systems, do a, you know, can you give us a walkthrough? And so that's what I thought I'd do before we get all of the panels and everything covered up while everything's kind of exposed, uh, be able to just kind of walk you through what we do. So we uh, work with Battleborn and we are dealers for Battleborn and also Explorus.life and we're certified installers with, cert with Explorus.life and uh, if you want to learn anything about electrical in vans then really Explorus.life is the go-to place. That's where I learn basically everything I know about. Uh, electrical and vans. I had some electrical experience before in more residential and industrial, but when you get into vans, it's a whole different thing. And it's probably the most intimidating part of the whole van build. And so uh, I kind of just wanted to walk through how we do our electrical systems. Um, if you're interested in components that we use, I'm going to put links to uh, things in the description. Also on our website, we have a whole DIY section where um, if you want to find out all the components that we use, we have those there for you with links. Um, I started out as a DIY van builder, and so I kind of my heart is with the DIYers, and so we want to help them out as much as we can. But if you're interested in having us do your electrical system or plumbing or any other part of your build or the entire build, uh, we do that as well. We do all of our construction with extruded aluminum. And uh, I'll put a link to the company that we use. They're about 30 to 40% less than 8020. And uh, just every bit is good. Um, great customer service. And so I'll put a link to that if you want to go through them. If you're doing, I would encourage, even if you're not doing your entire build out of extruded aluminum, the mechanical boxes for the electrical and plumbing. I would highly recommend you do out of extruded aluminum because it just makes it so much easier. If you watched our video that we just did recently about our plumbing system, uh, we build the whole thing on a bench and then just test it and then lift it up and put it into the van. Same thing with the electrical. This entire electrical system was built on the bench and then bench tested and then we just lift it up and put it into the van. Um, the electrical side is a little bit heavier than the plumbing side, so it, it's a little bit harder to move it in, but uh, we, we typically remove the batteries, put it in, and then install the batteries. So speaking of batteries, let's start with that. These are two 270 amp hour Battleborn Game Changer 3 heated batteries. So we like to use heated batteries, just give you a little bit of extra protection if you're storing your van or if you're, it's sitting for a few days or weeks in, in sub-zero uh, climate, then the heated batteries will protect you. Uh, they use the power within the batteries uh, to heat themselves and just kind of keep the freeze off. They don't use a ton of energy. I think Battleborn says that if you have the, the heater turned on and it's below zero, It'll last about seven or eight days um, if you don't have anything else in the van running. So if you're just storing the van and want to keep the batteries from freezing, that's a good option. Also, if you plug into shore power, a lot of our customers will store their vans over the winter. But then they can plug it into shore power, keep the battery heaters on just to keep those from freezing. Because lithium ion phosphate batteries do not like really cold weather. And so that's something we use in all of our builds is those heated batteries. Um, so I don't have all the circuits hooked up yet, but these wires will just go to a switch here on the back of this electrical box and be able to turn on the uh, heated batteries. And then they will just cycle on and off. There's a thermostat so that if it gets, I think, below about 25 or 30 degrees, it'll, it'll kick on and then it gets up above maybe around 40, it'll shut off. So it just keeps the chill off of them. So a nice little thing. Speaking of these batteries, the way that we tie them down, we have eye hooks bolted through the floor with um, big fender washers underneath. So these are bolted down and then we have a strap going over them and then we also have them bolted to the wall. So super secure. I like the Game Changer 3. The, the regular um, Game Changer 2s are nice. We use those in a lot of builds depending on the configuration. But these, um, if you want a little bit more battery power, um, have a smaller footprint. So we really like those. 
Um, like I said, these are 270 amp hours, so total of 540 amp hours in a real small um, footprint. And so nice to have those this way. So then moving back, we have our Victrum components. And uh, starting here, coming out of the batteries, we have the positive and negative, going into the Lynx shunt, and then into a Lynx distributor. So we really like to use the Lynx distributor because it just um, uses, it's a really clean, elegant way to have all your fuses and everything um, connected. Lynx distributor has four different places that you can connect your circuits. So what we do is we have one for our Orion, which is our um, alternator charger, the DC to DC charger. We have one for our smart solar um, up on the roof, comes through here, goes into one leg of this. We have one for our power to our inverter right here. And then we have one going to our DC um, circuit or DC panel, fuse panel. And so those four, the fifth thing that we hook up to this is the air conditioner. We typically install Dometic RTX 2000 air conditioner in all of our vans. And so we just, there are a couple of posts on the end of the Lynx distributor, and we just connect the positive and negative to those. We go through a breaker, we use an 80 amp uh, blue C breaker, and then it just goes to the um, Lynx distributor. So we can put all of these components plus the air conditioner, hook it right into this Lynx distributor. So now speaking of the different components, um, like I mentioned, the Orion is the alternator charger. We run um, wires from the battery up, up in the front of the van, underneath the van, up through the wall behind this and into the, link, into the Orion. And then on the solar, we run, have the solar panels up on the roof, run those down through the wall, through a breaker, a DC breaker. It's important that you use a DC either shutoff switch or breaker um, for this and then run it into the solar charge controller. Then we're right here we have our Serbo GX. Love the Serbo GX. Um, this is the touch screen. This will be mounted up on the wall up here. Um, but we'll have our tanks hooked to it. You can hook um, temperature sensors. We usually will put a temperature sensor in this compartment so you can kind of monitor the temperature of the batteries and the inverter. So we have a switch here and I'm just going to turn this on. So the whole system is going to come up. It'll take a, a couple of minutes or maybe 30 seconds for the um, screen to come on um, that's connected to the Serbo GX. While that's coming up, I'll just talk about this. So most of the DC components will be run through a DC breaker panel. And we really like the Blue C. We're big on using the highest quality products. And really, when you talk about electrical for um, vans, RVs, Marine, then Blue C is really the premier company for all of the panels. And um, we use their breakers and their bus bars and all those kinds of things, all those smaller components. Uh, they're really the best. Um, so this is a DC breaker panel. And so we'll connect all of our DC circuits into these. And uh, these are, is kind of cool because this one actually does not use fuses. It uses breakers like your, like typically an AC panel would use or your home where it trips the breaker and you can just go reset it so you don't have to put a new fuse in if it, the breaker trips. Um, so we run almost everything through this. There's a couple of exceptions. Um, these, this is um, rated for 15 amp circuits and the S-bar heater pulls more than 15 amps. It pulls about 25, up to 25. And so we'll run the S-bar heater right into this positive um, bus bar with its own fuse. Um, and then also our Girard awnings will typically run into this and it has its own fuse. Um, so we have that fuse and then this fuse will, this will just have wires coming off of this going into the input of this panel and then all of the individual circuits will, will connect to these. So, and then the, that comes with labels, so it's a really clean way. This will be mounted right here on the back. And then for the AC circuits, we also use Blue C. And this is a Buse Blue C AC panel. And it has, the top one is for the power in. So the, 
Victron inverter will put up, out up to 50 amps um, because it has a function called power assist where if you're connected to shore power and you're running a lot of devices that are pulling a lot of wattage, then it will combine both the shore power and the battery power to give you up to 50 amps. And so we swap out the 30 amp breaker that comes in this and put a 50 amp in. So your power in comes into this and then for our different circuits we have breakers for those. And so this will also go back here um, kind of side by side with the DC panel. So both of those will will just sit off the back. So you can see now the um, panel has come up and it's got shows us that we're all of our systems, I really like the Serbo um, GX. It, it shows you if you're plugged into shore power, your AC input. Um, and then when you're actually running devices, it'll show the kind of the flow of energy, whether it's from the batteries or from the shore power and how much you're pulling over here is your solar. It'll show what's coming into the solar. So a lot of videos about the Serbo GX um, out on the on YouTube, but it's a really nice way to monitor your system. So we use this in all of our vans. So from our um, AC and DC panels, we'll connect all of our circuits into those and run them out to the different locations in the van. Um, I'll do a video when we get a little bit further in this van and that I can actually show you the different circuits. But this is just kind of overview of the of kind of the infrastructure of the electrical system. So this van has something that's a first for us, and that is Starlink uh, mobile internet, satellite internet. And we're using the in-motion dish that um, doesn't have to be tilted or angled towards the satellites. It can lay flat, and it, can, um, it will work both when you're moving and when you're stationary. And so it's a pretty cool system. And I'll do another video uh, where I go into a lot more detail on that system and how we did it and where we're mounting everything. But um, this is just the power supply and the router and then the dishes up on the roof. And so I'm pretty excited to have that in this van. You know, I talk a lot about how we use this extruded aluminum. It's really nice because it's lightweight. You can get it everything. And then what we'll do is we'll just put this hex ply and we'll put a panel on this side and this side. We'll have a door um, to access this section up here and also the Starlink stuff. We'll have a door that'll open down here. But we just really like the extruded aluminum because we'll just we'll bolt this to the walls and we'll bolt it to the floor and it's not going anywhere. Super solid, super rigid, strong and lightweight. So really highly recommend using the extruded aluminum at least for your mechanical box construction. Just want to mention how we run our wiring. It's really nice to be able to tuck it in and run it behind the, the metal and down through some of the channels. But you need to be super careful that you're protecting the wires because a lot of these edges are sharp and you don't want a wire rubbing against that eventually causing a problem short or worse, um, you know, damaging your uh, components or even a fire. So whenever we run any of our wiring across metal, we always use this plastic loom. And so we'll just cut off sections of that, put it around the, the wires, and then you can either you can either tape it off with electrical tape or loop or um, zip ties so that it's protected whenever it's going across wire. Okay, then if you're running down through holes, we actually will drill. We drilled out and put a grommet through right here and another one down on the bottom. Any place where we're running wire through the metal, we'll use these grommets. And you can see all these wires that are passing through here are all in loom. And then these will actually come over the top. And when we frame out the van, we'll have furring strips here and here and leave an opening, a gap in them here. And then we'll actually put a metal plate over this so that it protects them so that you can't accidentally drill or nail something into these wires. And then we'll run the wires through here because our because with our pop-outs, our, pop, our flare is going to come right to here and we'll have like our screen for our Victron Serbo GX and switches and controller for our um, S-bar up here. And so we can tuck all these wires back into this area here and run them across. So all the wires that are going um, coming from the driver's side up high, we run through the ceiling and then down. Um, these are the ones coming off of the roof. We've got our cable for the... Um, satellite 
the Starlink satellite. We've got one for some um, porch lights. We've got our solar, and then we'll also have one for our awning, our Girard electric awning. We run all of those down through a uh, marine uh, deck gland, and then those will be tied up and they come down and connect to the different components. And then everything that's coming down from below, coming across, like our refrigerator, our, our water pump, um, our water heater, all the things that are on the driver's side, will actually run across our bed. When we're doing a fixed bed, um, our bed will be sitting here and we do a trough, call it a wire trough, that comes across here that all our wires lay in and then just go down and through here. Um, if you're doing a dinette and not doing a fixed bed, then you've got to come out with a different way. Or we've done a Murphy bed where we couldn't run wires across here. So in that case, we had to run everything over the top. So hopefully this helped you a little bit with designing your electrical system. Uh, I think the best thing to do is when, when we're kind of designing the layout of everything is we figure out what we have. We lay it all out. We'll like cut this backboard, lay it all out get it organized, figure out how we're gonna run all the wires, make sure we have room for all the connections. Um, and then we go ahead and just screw everything in and make, make all the connections. So uh, hopefully this helped. Uh, if you need help with your electrical system, um, reach out to us. We do, um, you know, if you just need help with the electrical system, we can do that. If you need us to build out your entire electrical system, plumbing system, we can do that as well. If you got value out of this video, give us a thumbs up. That'll tell YouTube to show it to even more people. We really appreciate your help with that. So thanks for watching. Jeff with Thrive Vans. Thrive on. See ya.